and welcome to The Prenup, your weekly source of essential wedding tips, expert advice, swoon-worthy inspo, and all things pertaining to the wonderful world of weddings. I'm Adriana, planner, coordinator, honorary bridesmaid sometimes, and today I'm going to be your major day, and we are going through an amazing topic today. It's going to be so helpful for anyone who's getting started on planning their wedding. That's the five things that you must do before starting to plan your wedding. So it's a really great episode. You're going to want to take notes, give lots of advice, even as to what conversations you need to have with family. So before we get started on that, we're going to do just a little cocktail hour to go over what's going on in the wedding world this week. So usually don't get political, but last weekend, Tiffany Trump was married at Mar-a-Lago. Um, and next weekend, Naomi Biden will be married on the South Lawn. It'll be the 19th ceremony that will take place on the South Lawn. So whatever your political affiliations are, I really don't care. We wish these ladies the best. I hope to draw some inspo for you from both weddings because if something can bring everyone together, it's weddings, right? Um, and on the topic of politics, there's very important election coming up, probably the most important election of the year. And that is the prenup best of awards. Okay. So you're going to be able to vote from the nominations on TikTok. You can follow me on TikTok at the underscore pre underscore nup. Um, I'll link that in the show notes, but look out for that. We're going to be announcing the winners before the end of the year, and you're going to be able to vote on that. So it's very, very exciting stuff there. Now into the main event, the moment you've been waiting for, the five things that you must do before planning your wedding. So grab a notebook, grab a pen, jot this down. It's really important stuff, okay? Uh, but really quickly, before we get into it, I just want to give a reminder to everyone that we are doing an enormous Black Friday sale. It's going to be the biggest sale that we'll have of the year on the prenup bridal planner. And you can find that at the dash pre dash nup.com. I'll link that in the show notes, but it's going to be 23% off the bridal planner. Again, this is going to be the biggest sale that we have of the year. So Definitely don't miss that. Okay, for real, the five must do's before planning your wedding. You don't want to get far ahead on your wedding planning without doing these things first. This is the foundation before you start planning. So grab that notebook, grab that pen, jot this down, okay? Number one, might sound obvious, but before you start pinning things, before you start looking into vendors, before you start making guest lists, you need to figure out where your funds are coming from and how much they are. And I know it sounds obvious, but hear me out. It's, it's really, really important. Your entire wedding is obviously going to be based on your budget. So no decision can be made without knowing what that is. And a guesstimate is really just not enough. In your head, you might be thinking, oh yeah, it's probably somewhere in the 15 to 20 range. It's just really important that you know exactly how much is allocated for the wedding and what you're including in the wedding budget. Are you including your reception only, or are you including ceremony reception and all surrounding events? Are you including your attire and accessories in that budget as well? There really is a lot that goes into it. And if there are certain contributors that you think might be willing to give money, but you're not sure if they are, it can be a little bit awkward to ask, but this is a really great way to go about it. So whether that's parents, grandparents, aunt, uncle, if someone had mentioned that they were willing to contribute something monetary to your wedding, you might want to just say, hey, you know, we're starting to plan our wedding. We're starting to budget for certain things. Were you planning on taking more of a guest role? or more of a host role. We don't expect anything either way. We want you to be as involved in it as you want. So no pressure. We were just curious. And the conversation will go from there. So that leaves the ball on their court. If they are giving you something great, if they're not, now you know. But this way you can move forward with the rest of the things that you need to do, need to do, excuse me, and get the ball rolling. And if you are fortunate enough to have someone who's contributing to your wedding, aside from you and your spouse, that's going to lead you right into number two. What is the involvement of your contributors? Are they expecting you to participate in certain cultural activities, religious activities? 
Um, do they want you to have certain surrounding events? Do they want specific people in your wedding? Do they want you to wear something specific? Do they want your wedding at a certain place? So these are really important things to talk about before you start planning, because if someone has agreed to pay for a portion of the wedding, they are at that point a host and you do need to be respectful of their wishes. So you definitely want to find out what their expectations are. Everyone has different views of the day, especially if it's parents. They've dreamed of this day for a long time. So yeah, maybe they could be a little bit annoying um, or overbearing, but especially if they're paying, I mean, this is a huge day for them. So at least hear them out and have respectful conversations. You're not going to agree on everything and that's okay. And it's okay to have discussions about your disagreements, but just remember they're really excited for this too. And if they are contributing, you need to hear them out at least. Um, and if you don't like the way they want to progress and they're really headstrong and your opinion isn't being heard, then maybe you don't want to accept that money. And that's going to lead us right into number three as well, your guest list. Okay. So after you've figured out your budget and your expectations, as well as anyone who's contributing expectations of your wedding day and surrounding events. Who is on your guest list and who is on their guest list? Because that's another layer as well. You might be wanting something really intimate and they might be wanting to invite all of their old colleagues and roommates. And you just need to get on the same page with that. So if you are planning something a little bit smaller, let them know that upfront before you even get into these kinds of discussions, before you even get into a monetary discussion. Let them know, hey, we're expecting a really big wedding or we're expecting a really small wedding. And the more communication, the better, really. So once you figure out who is on your guest list and your contributor's guest list, you'll be able to move forward. And just a reminder to yourself and anyone contributing, yeah, it might seem like, yeah, we want this big wedding and we want this person, this person, this person. But every ass in a chair is going to be another 4 to $20 and that's just for the chair, okay? If you are having a really large wedding and you have a budget that's not that large, it's a conversation that you need to have about concessions that need to be made elsewhere. Next is going to be style and formality, okay? So do you want a destination wedding? Do you want a backyard wedding? Do you want something that is full service? You're not gonna have to bring in your tables, chairs, linens, catering, all that good stuff. They have it all there. Or do you want something completely obscure? Um, do you want to do something that's a little bit more casual? Do we want a barbecue style? Do we want something that's black tie? Things to think about when you're planning your wedding and to get on the same page as your fiance with, just so you know your preferences and boundaries with each other. And number five, your time frame. A lot of people kind of overlook this and it's a big foundation in the wedding. Most venues book out about a year and a half. That's typical, but that's not everyone's timeline. And everyone's timeline is going to look a little bit different. So that doesn't mean that you need to book your wedding. That doesn't mean <laughs> that doesn't mean that you need to plan your wedding in a year and a half or more or less. It just depends on your preferences, your wants, needs, and availability. So just some things to consider. Are there any specific dates that you are or aren't looking for? Are there any certain days of the week that you are or aren't looking for? Are there limits in days or time frames? Did mom and dad book a European river cruise in September? Um, is your little brother Johnny graduating next May? Um, is cousin Sue in a wedding in July of next year? So just... The important people in your life, you kind of want to get together with them. Ultimately, it's going to be about you and your husband, but you definitely want, you know, your parents, hopefully your siblings and bridal party to be able to attend and it be a little easier for them. Unless you're eloping, which in that case, you don't need to worry about anyone except you and your fiance. I really hope that this gave you some clarity in the foundation of planning your wedding. And if you liked it, 
let me know and let me know what you want to hear about in future episodes, what your burning questions are, who you want to hear from in the wedding industry, um, any advice that you need. You can always email me. That's Adriana at the dash pre dash nup.com. That's going to be in the show notes as well. You can also reach out to me on Instagram, anywhere that you can message me. I'm on all social and that's all going to be linked below as well, except for Facebook, because I haven't been on Facebook in 15 years. I didn't like it then. I don't like it now. So I will probably never be on Facebook, but you can reach me anywhere. I'll soon in next week for more wedding tips, trends, advice, all the goodies. Thank you so much for watching and for listening. Happy planning. And I will catch you next time.